Quick note, since recording the podcast, Fur Harvesters has officially announced that they are postponing the March auction, so more details to come on that, but that's not surprising. Um, and <laughs> maybe the remainder of the uh, episode is still worth listening to. I hope you enjoy it anyway. Hey y'all, welcome to the Coyote Trapping School Podcast. I am your host, Chris Pope, and uh, coming at you... Hey y'all, welcome to the Coyote Trapping School Podcast. I am your host, Chris Pope. We're coming at you today wondering what is on the uh, on the verge with this whole coronavirus deal. Uh, Going to talk through some fur auction results um, and uh, speculate, I guess, on, on where where this all could lead and what this all could mean. Speculation being the main keyword there. So, first off, we got to thank our sponsors, Cotspros Lures, um, top quality lures and it's trapping supplies all the way around lures and baits um, been still using some of their uh, bait and lure uh, actually I got some uh, I'm out of gold label in my trapping bag my lure bag so uh, gotta add that in there been doing some coyote work um, our trapping seasons out but our kite we can trap coyotes and beavers year-round and uh, so you get I, I get a few uh, landowners and on some coyotes caught especially right here as we're approaching um, nesting and fawning season so been doing a little bit of that been rocking my my Koch bros baiting lures um, they'll get you set up with whatever you need whether you're finishing this season or getting ready for the next I'm, I'm going to uh, pull in all those traps this week and I'm gonna try to get a jump go ahead and uh, get everything washed up new stakes on and that way I'll know um, you know what I need going in the next season so uh, be sure to check them out if you're in need for trapping supplies. Also, I've had a little bit of uptick in folks signing up for the Trappers Academy course that I offer. Um, and forgive me, I don't have a good um, a good link for you other than just go to coyotetrappingschool.com and click on the Trappers Academy in the top right. Um, it's, it's still heavily geared towards um, coyote trapping and getting started coyote trapping. But there's other modules in there. I've got a whole set library of different sets to make. So if you're self-quarantined uh, through this coronavirus deal, um, that's a great place to, to go and uh, keep yourself busy getting ready for next trapping season. I've also been working on some uh, some wallets here, um, trying to get a few pre-made ahead. I've been experimenting a little bit. I don't know how well you can see these, but um, this is what I've been what I've been doing. I've just been kind of using a brown thread, so I experimented a little bit with a little bit thicker white thread just as kind of an accent it's not white it's ivory so uh i don't know which one i like better i think they both turn out pretty good but uh you can let me know and uh if you're looking for a beaver tail wallet i got let's see i got some ropers as here and i've got just some regular bifold bill folds and then i also do a uh, front pocket wallet um so if you're wanting your nice quality um beaver tail handmade beaver tail wallet um, and you want to help support the trapping industry and the fur industry hit me up I'd love to make one for you so um, otherwise let's get in to uh, to some of these fur prices and auction prices and I guess I guess we start out by saying if you've already sold your fur you may have uh, you may be ahead of the game because who knows how this whole coronavirus deal is is gonna affect everything um, it's you know it's man it seems like it's just things have changed so much in the last 72 48 hours um, and uh, you know as of Friday March 13th uh, for harvesters auction made the announcement they issued a press release saying they were continuing to go forward with their auction at the end of March um, Coincid not coincidentally, but as part of that, one thing that I didn't realize is that um, after the fur harvesters auction, after their, I guess their auction, um, they are going to auction off all of the fur that NAFA still has. So I've still got fur sitting up there on NAFA's books. You know that's been a that's been a question since um, NAFA went belly up. Is what's going to happen with all the fur up there? Um, that's going to that is going to get auctioned after the uh, the fur 
at fur harvesters provided that that auction still happens it sounds like it still hap it's going to still happen um, you know I know they have a lot of technology and, and ways that um, people can view the auction and view items that have to actually be there um, but like I said this this situation is ever developing and there's new travel restrictions potentially coming and um, so who, who knows how that's all gonna play out so if you already sold your fur that might be a great thing um, <clears throat> I was just gonna run through and I'll have to honestly I have to give a big uh, thanks to Jeremiah at trappertoday.com he is he is always on top of sending out auction results uh, and emails and stuff and that's what all I did is I just went back to the emails that he sent me and uh, printed off these auction results to kind of talk about and it's it's nothing spectacular it's nothing different that you know you don't already know that the fur market ain't spectacular right now um, and maybe less so in the next this year um, but I thought it was worthwhile I, I picked out a, a few here but most of these are kind of semi southwest region which is you know where I'm at and what I'm a lot interested in and I know a lot of y'all are too so um, I figured that would, that would be a good um, something good to kind of give us a feel for what our first value at because it's different than what you know all of the high numbers and the the uh, rosy pictures that it gets painted one thing to keep in mind with these these local auctions is that and it's not sometimes it's differentiated but usually it's not always differentiated whether it's green fur or dried fur so in a lot of cases I think a lot of these this fur that gets sold is green fur so it's not put up it's just frozen <clears throat> and you know it still needs to be fleshed and and stretched or fleshed and whatever um, so the first one we'll just go it's not really alphabetically but the first one is uh, Arkansas for auction results from February 2020 um, and this I have to say the only fur auction that I've ever been to was a fur auction in Arkansas when I was in Arkansas and so that was really neat and it's neat to kind of go through now from my experience there the majority of fur there was green um, so green is always going to result in a little bit lower price because it still has to be handled right um, nothing spectacular this doesn't give the highs and the lows this just gives the average it doesn't even give quantities which I really like when you see some quantities more of just for um, you know personal knowledge but beaver five bucks coyote 16 um, nothing red fox is 12 this is one of the few cases where red fox is better than great fox raccoon a buck 50 um, bobcat 30 bucks and otters 15 bucks nothing spectacular there at all like I said I would I would guess the majority of this is green so not put up uh, we'll knock out one of the spectacular ones so we can get on to the real world ones this is a Nevada trappers auction um, and we all know Nevada or if you don't know Nevada has some really high quality cats and coyotes you get some of that high desert country um, so Bobcats they had a, I, I really like the, the information that they give here Bobcats, uh, they sold 905 Bobcats. Average price was $256.67. That's pretty darn good. They sold 80% of the cats that were offered. High cat was uh, 1278 bucks. That's pretty impressive. Coyotes, 1144 were offered. The average price was $72.29. 95% were sold. The high top lot coyote was $387, which is, again, pretty darn impressive. Um, that being said I don't really consider that representative of the general fur market sure not representative of my fur market here's one that's a little bit closer to home this is a West Virginia fur auction this was held on March 7th so this was just a couple weeks ago so one thing that struck me on this possums number of possums offered 394 West Virginia boys can use a possum, man. I like it. Uh, the average was a buck seven. That's uh, that's some dedicated skinning for, of course, that's four hundred dollars, you know, for for those possums. But um, I, I thought that was pretty funny. One spotted skunk. I would like to get my hands on a spotted skunk. Supposedly we have them here in Georgia. That's why I've never caught mink. Uh, this hurts some some folks' feelings. Eighty-eight offered. Uh, average of three dollars and thirteen cents. Five cents was the low. I don't know who the heck would sell a mink for five cents. 
incidentally, I had got a few mink sent to me, some um, Kentucky mink by a trapper that was listening to uh, when I asked, you know, one of my projects, you see my, my fur hanging here, I've never trapped a mink. I am hugely disappointed in that, but in saying that, you know, I have an idea. I'm, I'm, I got to try to slow down at some point and actually do something with some of this fur. But one of the things that I think would be really neat is to have like a furs of the southeast, uh, either pillow or kind of a table. I don't even exactly know what it would be. But initially, probably try to do a pillow and just see how that does. But you know, just a small patch of fur from each one of our fur bearers, and uh, I think that would be really neat from a from a talking point and um, um, I, I don't know just conversation piece I guess is what I'm trying to say and also um, I guess in general just a conversation piece something neat um, that I think will be neat to do so that's one thing that I'm working on so if you are disappointed with the fur market as it is right now and you have some mink especially southern mink I hate to be uh, not trying to be a rebel here but uh, you know I my, my idea is furs of the southeast, so if you've got any southern mink uh, in your freezer or stretched or whatever, shoot me a message. Um, I would, I'd love to talk to you about um, working out something to get, get a hold of those. Uh, moving on, beaver. 261 beaver offered. I, I'm, I'm impressed with the quantities um, of this West Virginia fur auction. Man, West Virginia Mountaineers getting after it. Um, average eight bucks. If that's green, that's not too bad, man. If that's, if that's finished uh, stretched and dried mm, that's a lot of work for eight bucks um, red fox 515 offered at $4.36 gray fox 149 offered at 937 so generally what you're seeing for whatever reason is a uh, gray fox for the most part is is out pricing red fox now a uh, coach a thousand and fifty one offered that's pretty darn good uh, average $16.96. Um, the high was $42.50. And uh, I guess my takeaway there is that just kind of shows, showcases our southern our southern coyotes. You know, we, we, we hear all this talk about, um, you know, high coyote prices and um, all this, but man, our, our southern coyotes, and I, I've never trapped that much in different parts of the country, sure not in the Midwest or up north or out west for that matter. Um, to, to see other coyotes, but that many, but um, you know, just in my experience, just trapping here in the southeast and, and a little bit around the southeast, is and our coyotes have such a very a, a high color variation from from you know coyote to coyote that there's there's not a lot of consistency in the fur market. You know, they're looking for consistency. They want you know they're going to need to be able to match up those different furs and things. So. <clears throat> Yeah, that's kind of my two cents there is um, hey, 17 bucks for a, a Georgia coyote. I'd be tickled to death with that, you know. Um, but that is the reality uh, for even high-priced coyotes, I would say. It's, it's southern coyotes. We're not, we're not seeing the crazy prices of 70 $100 coyotes like they are up north and out west. That's just, like I say, that just, that's a, a good indicator to me of just the quality of our coyotes, our southern coyotes, and, and I may be totally wrong. Obviously, there's going to be a, an overall fur quality difference, but then I, I think you throw in the, the color variation factor. I think that I, my assumption without having any knowledge is that that has an impact. Um, another heartbreaking thing here, raccoon, two, uh, 2,861, average of 257. Man, that hurt brother for the fellas' feelings. Now, the sale total was uh, fifty-one thousand dollars. I wish I had the the species total summed up here, but you're looking at shoot three, four. You're looking at better than five thousand skins offered in this West Virginia sale. That's that's pretty impressive. I, that that would be a that'd be a sale worth going. I don't know if there's any other sale in the South that uh has that much fur. If y'all know of one, let me know. I, that, I'm, I might be interested in going to that one. Missouri Trappers Association. This one was on February 22nd. Um, now they actually do differentiate uh, wet or green and dried fur. So they had, um, and, and this one thing that I was just going to point out is kind of the difference. Beaver dried 201 
beavers offered average of eight dollars and eighteen cents. Uh, beaver wet or green, one hundred thirteen offered average of five dollars and seventy seven cents. So what's that? Two dollars and thirty cents. Two dollars and fifty cents, roughly. Three dollars. Man, I'm ter terrible at math. I think that's right. Two dollars and fifty cents. What's a uh, Boom, $2.41. My math ain't terrible. To me, for the work that goes into uh, relation to stretching a beaver, that $2.41 they worth it, I'd sell them all day long for six bucks a pop. Uh, green, just fleshed and frozen. Coyote, 912 offers. So that's, that's a pretty, pretty good uh, chunk. Uh, average, 2085. So that's, that's not a bad average. Um, the high coyote was 80 bucks. So not bad at all. Um, mink was dismal. Gray fox they had 63 offered at right at nine buck average. Not too bad. Um, otters dried, um, twenty two dollars. Green eighteen dollars, a four dollar difference. Otters still a lot of work. Um, raccoons dry four dollars and eleven cents. That's for 2829 That's a that's a big slug of coons. Wet, they only had 292 that were green. They sold for um, 253 so a buck 60 difference. I still don't know about that. Little, I mean, I'm no expert flesher, stretcher, especially uh, raccoons, but um, I think it would take me longer to flesh and stretch a raccoon than it would be worth that extra dollar fifty. That's all. That's all just something you, you know you got to decide for yourself and a lot of people like I, I like the fur put up aspect But um, if man once you get a family and other obligations You gotta look at how, how much time does that take you? Uh, Pennsylvania, this is the PTA district 5 fur auction held on February 9th um, Not a ton of fur here 58 red fox 17 grays 31 coyotes the coyotes averaged just under 22 bucks uh, 210 raccoons averaged three dollars and fifty-eight cents. At 11 skunks averaged ten dollars and ninety-five cents. That ain't bad at all. They must have a, a niche taxidermy market or something there. That's pretty good. Oh, let's see. Ohio. They had two auctions: one in January and one in February. Um, the January auction they had 170 coats, brought thirty-four dollars average. 2,109 raccoons brought 660 average, and then in February 132 coats brought 27 dollars average, and 514 raccoons brought 331 average. So, see a, a, a price drop from January to February. It'd be interesting to know what what drove that. Um, let's see if that's pretty well across the board. Everything dropped from January to February. That's interesting. Huh. North Dakota, this is this is one of those that um, you might be better off just to ignore. Uh, they had a hundred uh, one thousand three hundred fifteen coyotes stretched and dried, eighty five percent sold, averaged one hundred and thirty bucks. That is unreal. Um, and the only way that I can attribute to that is anybody that's crazy enough to live in North Dakota need some kind of reward for living there because that <laughs> I say that in, in jest I got a good friend of mine that lives in North Dakota and actually got to go up there golly it's been a while it's probably been eight nine years ago um, got to go up there and do a little hunting with him and um, man that I'm sure I don't know how much of North Dakota is different but just that wide open prairies and the wind and I'm not a wind guy I like trees to block wind and I, I, don't, I don't like that wind but um, 130 bucks average on coyotes is outstanding. Um, this was a January sale, by the way. Raccoon, they had 106 stretched and dried raccoons that averaged $8.43. Now, I'm gonna tell you, if a North Dakota raccoon only averages less than eight, or just over eight bucks, that's a tough coon market, because you're talking about some giant Jolly Whopper raccoons up there. They got coons up there that are bearing our coyotes down here, I'm pretty sure. Um, and then lastly, we'll wrap up with uh, Fur Takers of America, Chapter 7B. This is an Indiana sale. So this is uh, one of our good buddies over there, Hoosier Trapper Outdoors, Mr. Charlie and Justin. 
Um, this is one that they're involved with. Meat, they had 19 meat sold at an average of $2.85. Yikes. Um, cooms, 239 cooms sold for an average of $2.35. Sounds about right. Uh, coats, 138 coats for $17.44. There again, I mean, you know, the one, the one bright spot that, that, you know, everybody's talked about over the last couple years has been the coat market. And granted, 17 bucks is not bad for Southern coats, and not the Indiana coats or Southern coats, but um, still, who knows how all that's gonna shake out. Um, I guess the, the question there, the, the big kicker will be how the fur harvesters auction plays out because that is the only auction now major worldwide auction with wild fur right it's, it's all wild fur um so that'll really set the precedent set the stage and uh, you know that's kind of one of the the awkward not awkward but you know that's we're gonna see where the fur market is probably not not the ideal time but i mean it is what it is with the with the conditions and this whole coronavirus and everything um you know, usually in the past, NAFA has had a first sale in like January, and so you got a snapshot, an idea of what what was to come. Now, a lot of times, it seemed like uh, that January sale was the the best sale uh, as far as price wise, and then things tailed off. But um, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Like I said, FHA, as of two days ago, they said they're still moving forward with their auction as planned um, and hopefully us NAFA guys it's, it's not you know probably not the best and I know it's not the best scenario for the NAFA fur to go after um, that being said it's it's got to sell at some point hopefully right and, and at this point I think anything's better than nothing and if we can get a little something out of it and, and uh, don't feel like we got totally shafted then that's all the better excuse me I apologize for yawning um, other notes, things of interest around the fur market, Grown Walls has stopped all their fur roots um, throughout the U.S. and presumably Canada now as well. Um, so I don't, I don't know exactly. It, they're still they're still buying. I think they're just buying coyotes and beavers at their facility, um, wherever their facility is located. I can't. I'm not sure right now. Um, let's see if I got that. Uh, so beginning March 11th, all U.S. routes are suspended due to unprecedented conditions in the wild fur industry. We'll only accept raw coyote and beaver at our, at our forest and facility. Um, and so, you know, we'll see how that plays out. I mean, that's a huge, with this whole concern around the coronavirus, um, you know, they're there interacting with hundreds of people a day um, you know I can see where that's a, a huge risk for them and, and why they would make that decision um, I will also say I saw yesterday I believe it was yesterday Xander Fur they made a post uh, let's see if I can pull it up here we go and uh, it just has some some dried fur and it says don't panic uh, trappers and hunters, we hope everyone has had a safe and successful season. Although the wild fur market, like most things, has been impacted by the coronavirus, we'd like to remind everyone that we do have continued demand for most wild fur and are still actively collecting fur from all sections. Uh, we thank you for your patience and some of our buying dates that have been postponed and the possibility of others being rescheduled. To be clear, there have been no cancellations. Please feel free to contact us for updates and rescheduled dates. As a reminder, we do accept first ship to our headquarters. Um, so there, um, you know, everybody's trying to, to work through this situation and see, especially with the, the uncertainty in China, <clears throat> and most of our fur goes to China, how that's gonna play out. Not only is a huge uncertainty in China, Italy, where, um, you know, a lot of our fur goes um, from the high fashion end in Europe, uh, they're on total lockdown. Um, so I mean, this this uh, this whole coronavirus thing, man, it's 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 um 
it's it's pretty wild. Not that I'm selling you something nobody else knows. It's it's hard to get a feel. Um, it's hard to get a feel because it doesn't even even just the numbers that have that have happened so far in Italy and in China. I mean, it's it's not been super drastic, you know, epidemic levels uh, like you would expect from all the panic. But man. You know, like I said, it, things have changed in the last couple of days, and I don't know about where y'all were at, but around here, all the store shelves are empty. I mean, people have made runs on dry goods and canned goods, and especially toilet paper. Um, so, and on one hand, seems sure seems like folks are uh, overreacting, but on the other hand, I don't want to be the idiot that that uh, looks back and says, "Man, I should have took that more seriously." So. And I think that's that's where everybody's at. Is we don't know where this is going. We don't know how it's all going to shake out. And um, the old saying, "Better safe than sorry," um, I guess is what we're what we're leaning on. And, and it seems like the um, the self isolation and the social distancing is um, supposedly the best options for combating the spread of this. And so. All I'll say is best of luck to y'all all. Um, like I said, if you have already sold your fur, that may be a good thing. If you haven't, well, we'll see what happens. We'll see if this uh, if this sale, you know, if a fur harvester sale goes through as planned. Um, they got another one planned in May. Um, and so, um, you know, we'll get a better picture of what the fur market looks like for this year. And uh, hopefully, maybe there's some silver lining somewhere in it. But uh, if there's not, I think all y'all listening are like me that um, we don't trap for the money anyway. We trap for the love of it, and uh, you know, regardless, we're going to keep on trapping. And I appreciate every one of y'all for that and for that perspective. And uh, so, keep on keeping on. We'll catch up with you next time.